Hey guys, Chris with Palometry, and today I'm gonna to talk about the poster, The Banks Are Always Open by Ray Higley. This poster is a Loch Ness monster of sorts in the world of bank pool. There's a rumor about it that it even exists. Some people have searched for it and you can't buy this anywhere. I gotta thank my friend Charlie for actually helping me get my hands on this thing because it's really interesting and I wanna teach you the basics of how to use it. First of all, the idea is you've got a pool table here and then you've got a copied or mirrored in your image pool table over and over in every direction. You've got four or five tables kind of thinking in the spot on the wall direction. Now it is based on the rail groove. So it's just like the playable area multiplied over and over again. There's a whole system that he has to do the multi-rail shots. It's pretty interesting, but I'm gonna show you the basics on how he calculates a one rail shot so you can see how the system sort of generally works. At its core, the one rail bank shot in this system is designed around a mirror image. So you would think about where you want the ball to end up after you bank it, and you would flip that over the rail groove over here. And the theory is all you have to do is aim at this point in order for it to go in. Now I have some fundamental flaws with that theory. First, because that's speed sensitive. There's only one speed that would work to that point. And I think that's the wrong point based on my tests. I'm gonna unveil where I think that spot is in some later videos, but for now, I just wanna show you how he calculates it. Now, if you travel with me back in time to your middle school math class for similarity or proportional uh, relationships, you're gonna see a triangle right here. You see it, right? Now, if I build a bigger triangle out to that spot, right? We're flipping this over. If I put a point at that spot and I continue the trajectory, the idea is I would just have to aim the ball into this spot, but I don't know if you notice a bigger triangle here. Since these share identical angles, they are similar. So this smaller triangle is similar to this larger triangle. That means there's a proportional relationship among the sides that we can use. So theoretically, we know this is actually in the system the number we're trying to calculate. This is our x in algebra. We wanna know how far from the ball we're trying to bank, how far from that should we aim forward on this rail. So we're trying to find this x value here. Now it's easy to calculate this number. So we know one number, we have a missing number. And then on the bigger triangle, we can calculate the distance, these two, uh, sorry, these two numbers. We can calculate the distance from the ball to outwards from this point perpendicular. And we can uh, measure this distance here. This distance happens to be the same as the distance of the ball to the rail groove. This distance happens to be this number plus four diamonds. For this shot, that means this distance, I've set up right at center table, it means this distance would be two. This distance here would be six. So two is comparable to six. The same way that four, because we're this distance out here, four is comparable to our unknown number. Let me show you that on like a math problem. So here's more of an overhead view of this situation. You can see the triangles look more to scale being this is six diamonds away, right? So this would be two diamonds to the rail and then another four diamonds out because this mirrored image, this point here is four diamonds out from the table. So what we have here is a more algebraic representation where you have B and Y, X and A, and the sides are corresponding. Let me pull them out a little bit into two separate triangles and you can see that the ratio of side length X to A, that ratio is equal to the ratio of side lengths Y to B. Traditionally, we would cross multiply these numbers, X times B and Y times A, we'd get them equal and to solve for our unknown X, we would divide both sides by B. So we get this formula here, which is of most interest to us. So the missing number, we wanna know how far to shoot along the rail is Y times A divided by B. Y times A divided by B. Well, in our specific scenario, we have these numbers. They're adjusted to not look to scale. This is kind of how it looks from the front view. Uh, it doesn't look to scale, but this is how it looks. Um, so we end up with Y, which is our four, times a, four times two is eight, divided by six gives us one and one third. So there is our magic number. From the position of the ball, we need to aim one and one third diamonds over. Again, we found one and a third is our measure on this rail here. So I need to aim, because we're at the center here, this is four, four plus one is 
over to here plus another third. We're aiming at four and one third. The problem is though, the system doesn't go through the diamonds. It is a mirror to the rail groove. So I've got to come out, not even to the rail, out to the rail groove. I'm at 1.333 diamonds, I'm estimating. And then that's where I would have to aim this shot with a nice kick. Let's see how it goes. Medium speed. A second example here, I've got the ball set up at diamond three and 2.5 this way. So we gotta figure out our numbers. Now our A value, of course, is the distance to the rail here. So that's 2.5. Our B value would be 2.5 plus four, because remember we're trying to go out perpendicular to where the mirrored image would be, four diamonds out. So uh, B is 6.5. And then we need our Y value that way, which would model from three to zero here. So our Y value is three, and of course we're trying to figure out how far to aim this way. Well, we need to do y times a divided by b. So our y value is three times our a value is 2.5. So three times 2.5, that's 7.5. And then I need to divide 7.5 by this value here. Well, that's 6.5. You can see even in a pretty nice grid spot, we come up with some tricky math even on the fly. So it's 7.5 divided by 6.5. Well, it's like one and, and then we have an extra one over six, one sixth, one six and a half. What's, what's that? Uh, like, I don't know, about one fifteen percent of a diamond? Uh, maybe an eighth? I'm gonna go with an eighth. No, that doesn't even make sense because that'd be an eighth. You see, I'm a math teacher and this is still sort of messy in my head. I think it's about 15%. So I'm gonna go about one, so I'm from three, I'm gonna go about one and one five diamonds. I'm gonna come out to the rail groove and I'm going to aim at that spot with a full ball hit, medium speed. A little short. I wonder if my touch was off or my math was off. Let's do one more that's just a little bit trickier numbers. And it's quite a long shot here too. We're still gonna aim cross corner. So this is kind of a difficult shot to begin with, but let's just practice the math underneath so you can see how it works. Again, I'm gonna take ball in hand for demonstrative purposes, but there is a triangle, right? Like something like this, that I don't know, you're gonna aim in this area here, that there's a triangle here that's similar to a much bigger triangle a much bigger triangle out to that spot there. So we need to figure out our Y value, our B value, and our A value, that'll give us our X value. So I have this lined up at about 7.1 diamonds, or it meant to be about 7.1 diamonds here. 7.1 diamonds that way, that's our Y value. And then I have it out at our about 1.6. So I need to mathematically do 1.6, that's my A times Y, 1.6 times 7.1. You got that? 1.6 times 7.1. The best I can really do in my head is 1.5 times seven. I know I'm gonna be a little low, so I'll round up after. One and a half sevens is 10 and a half. Let's round that up to 11. That's the best I can do in my head, 1.6 times 7.1. Now, what I'm also gonna have to do, that's Y times A, I need to divide by B. So I need to divide by four plus 1.6 is 5.6. So I have 11 divided by 5.6. Hey, that's not that bad. That's pretty close to 5.5, um, but it's gonna be a little less than, so 5.5 would be two, so it's a little less than two. Let's call that 1.9. So now what do I have to do? I have to measure on this rail. I have to measure 1.9 over. And again, I was at 7.1. So 7.1 minus one would be 6.1 minus 0.9 would be 5.2. Now I need to move out from the end rail. I need to move out to the, not from the end rail, but from the rail to the rail groove. So I'm at 5.2 rail groove aiming point. So I should be able to aim this and the system calls for medium speed. So I'm aiming, let's just check that, 5.2, where the ball would sit on the rail groove. I'm gonna aim this medium speed. Hey, not too bad.
Now for multi-rail shots, it has like, if you're aimed out here, you would end up adding a certain amount and going up a certain amount, but you'd have to figure out based on the poster, you'd have to figure out what pattern that is for a multi-rail shot. You'd have to add in sets of four, uh, eight, 12, because it's always going out um, either side pocket or end pocket. So you're adding in sets of four or eight in either of the Y values and the B values, um, depending on the multi-rail shot you're shooting. You have seen me have some success with the one rail pattern, but again, you're limited to your speed and you're limited to the ability to do some of these mental calculations on the fly, which is pretty tricky. I'll give it some more practice and see what I think. Maybe I'll show a video of doing some multi-rail stuff. But for now, this was Ray Higley's The Banks Are Always Open.